Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's brilliant. I think what you two have been doing is fantastic for the battalion. And uh, I see it across the country, but I've been tracking your YouTube interviews from the very outset. Colonel Clint was the one that flagged it up to me and, uh, and he was buzzing about it. And yeah, so no, brilliant. It's uh, anything that we can do to keep that flame alive and let's get through the other side of it and let's start yeah. doing what we all love uh, doing face to face. Okay, we'll just get started if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, Colonel Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you please introduce yourself for our viewers? Sure, so I'm Colonel Stuart Williams. I'm the Chief of Staff Army Cadets based down in Aldershot in Regional Command, although currently sat in my front room in Lincolnshire, uh, enjoying working from home. Well, it is a bit of a challenge. But about me, I commissioned into the Royal Regiment of Artillery in 1989. So what, 31 years um, as a gunner and then the general staff, yeah. And uh, highlights, I, well, commissioned from Sanders. Then I went back to be a platoon commander at Sanders, which was just fantastic. And I'm still in touch with a lot of those cadets now. I then had the privilege of commanding uh, J. Sideris A battery, an AS-90 gun battery in 3RHA. And I then went back and commanded the regiment, 3rd Regiment Royal Horse Artillery uh, in Germany, which was fantastic. Then uh, the highlight was being Deputy Commander 7 Infantry Brigade, where some may know me from, uh, four years there. I think the, the significant thing about all of that and why I've just, less for Sanders, focused on those three, is I've spent eight and a half years with the Desert Rats. So seven armoured brigade twice, and then seven infantry brigade for my final um, spin of the dice. And, uh, and I was really proud to have worn that red rat on my uh, sleeve, which is, yeah, which is now the reason for arm flash. Yeah, so the desert rats was, was, was amazing. So that's really me. Cool. So thank you very much. Um, the next question is how and when did you get involved with the Armoured Cadet Force? or with the cadet forces? Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a great question, because question, I was never a cadet. Mm -hmm. mm. I didn't ask for it, actually. I asked to be Deputy Commander 7 Infantry Brigade because it was involved, it was based in the East Midlands. I was in Cyprus at the time, and the army was changing, and I thought, right, done my time in Cyprus, been a, been a challenge, let's get back to UK, the army's changing fast. I want to be involved in the regional side. So it's more by luck than judgment, really, Stuart, in so much as I didn't understand the cadets. Mm -hmm. uh, but what a journey it's been. So when I got into then what was actually 49, 49 East Brigade, for all, albeit for a month, uh, I soon realized that the region was uh, 12 counties, 10 counties, East Midlands, East Anglia, and sorry, 12 counties and nine army cadet forces, 16,000 army cadets. And I went, wow, this is huge. I then needed to get to know a bit more about them. And I was very lucky in that from the outset, I had a great mentor in Colonel Peter Christian, who was a lifelong army cadet. He joined at the age of 12 and he left at the age of 65. <laughs> and for those first two years, they were really informative years. I mean, he, he and I did everything together. We travelled the length and breadth of East Anglia and East Midlands together because it's about people. And I was really? engaged from the outset with people. And the brigade commander delegated cadets running the firm base, so cadets and community engagement, to me. But Peter held my hand and steered me through it. And we had the most amazing time. And I'm still in touch with Peter now. And it's great because when you, 
you, you talk to people like that and realize what it was like in, you know, the 1960s, silver service and, you know, lunches and dinners. You go, whoa, that's, that's <laughs> real officer's mess. Um, but that was great. And then with Peter, I then made a play because of the size of our region. And again, because I understood now more about the cadets, I went, right, we need to, uh, it's too big for one person. I mean, Peter lived in culture in just outside Colchester in Essex. Mm -hmm. So if he was driving to the furthest North detachment, which was in Derbyshire, which was almost in Manchester, that was a yeah. five hour drive from home up there. Mm -hmm. Now for your battalion, that's, Pretty That's sure. normal, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, I I'm looking forward because actually one of the things I'm going to do is I want to get to the Shetlands. So, um, but so I said, this is this is this is bonkers. So I made a, uh, a, a built a case to then support command to say I need two Colonel Cadets. I can't do justice to this amazing organisation, this amazing youth organisation that you two know more about than I do. Um, and they, they backed me. So I then got two Colonel Cadets. So I saved weight, bye bye to Peter, although stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. Um, and as they still are. And then I had Colonel Cadets East Midland and Colonel Cadets East Anglia. So I had Ian Sackery and Colonel Chris Sherwood Smith. Uh, and again, we were a, a team and we did things together. And I've been blessed, um, with them their support and I think when you understand our organization and you realize what it actually does for children and young people and it is the opportunity and it is the life skills yes. I think it, I refer to it as you know it's a club you're members of our club you two are members of our club you are instructors you're you've got it I've met you before, You're in, you inspire the cadets. When you realise that actually we are giving children in particular opportunity and life skills, uh, and you, we set them up for success, you go, this is really important, really important. So, Stuart, more by luck than judgment, but it's, uh, and wow, go back to yeah. 2014, how lucky am I? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, sir, uh, Sergeant Major Taggart and myself have been around a long time and you've had your army career. Now, from experience, you know, we were wondering why you think it's taken so long for the British Army to positively and actively engage with the Army Cadet Force. Because from experience, the support and appreciation for what we do and our organisation as a whole has only really come to fruition in the last decade or so. Why do you think this is the case? It's a great, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, it is a great question. And it comes down to the fact that since 2003, we've been fighting a war initially on one front and then on two fronts in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we as an army were on a treadmill and that treadmill was, was going fast and it wasn't stopping. And you were coming off one operation, you were recuperating, you were training for the next and off you went. Yeah. And we had a very different setup in the UK. Now, bear in mind, I, up until I was Deputy Commander 7 Brigade, I had spent the majority of my service in Germany. Mm -hmm. And so I was a new, I was a newbie when it came to, to the UK and the regional footprint. Mm -hmm. That's why it was, it was a really exciting challenge to come back. So I think in, in really answering your question, Daisy, it's because I think it's no excuse, you know, fighting wars, yeah, we, yeah, but we still had a presence in UK. But what changed was that in 2014, they cr the army restructured and created infantry brigades and it was an infantry brigade and a regional headquarters. So it was seven infantry brigade and headquarters east. It was 51 infantry brigade and, and headquarters Scotland. And as a result, you got a deputy commander. So you had a brigade commander and then you had a deputy commander. And like Colonel Sand is doing in, in Scotland, 
I should think it's it's Brigadier Robbins probably done the same as Brigadier Charlie did with me and said, right, you get on run the firm base, cadets are yours. And I know that um, Colonel Gary is, is, is heavily involved with cadets as well. And of course, that was, that, was a, that was a game changer, I think, because you were then immersed in this firm base and you suddenly had the cadets. Mm -hmm. So I go back to my earlier question, answer 16,000 cadets. Uh, so I think that was why it changed. But equally, the headquarters that I'm chief of staff of now, the Army headquarters, Army Cadet Art headquarters, yeah. is bigger now than it was 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago, it was Colonel Murdo, Murdo Urquhart and two people. Hello. <laughs> you know, we're bigger than the Army. Yeah. Um, but I think the other thing is that you, um, and I'm going to single out one person because he's a, uh, um, and he was, in, he was an inspiration and still is an inspiration to me. And that's uh, Brigadier Charlie Collins, who was commander of the Desert Rats. He was my third brigade commander. In, uh, sorry, second, second brigade commander of three. Uh, but I served for the full time as his deputy commander, the full time of his command. And... Uh, Brigadier Charlie, soon to be Major General Charlie Collins, he's going to command the 1st Division from York. Uh, he is, I would go anywhere with that man, and, and he wanted to know about cadets. He wanted to know about the region. And when he realised the size of the cadets, and of course he was a rifles cap badge, and the rifles tend to get cadets, mm -hmm. he suddenly had his eyes opened, like I did, to who we are. And how I talk about who we are, because we are the Army Cadets. And when you suddenly have a warfighter um, of his pedigree who suddenly goes, I get it, this is important. And when you've got a brigade commander like Charlie Collins who tells his eight commanding officers, you will support Stuart in supporting army cadets, that makes a difference. Yeah. And we're now getting commanders in the army who understand cadets. General Charlie gets cadets yeah. and, you know, I'm sure that he will be visiting if I, and I will, I'll invite him to come, you know, and close to home to go and see cadet detachment because he will, because he's that type of person. It's about people and by crikey, there's a man who gets people and cares. So I think that's, that's it. That's why Daisy, if that helps. Well, thanks for answering that, sir. And you know, we have noticed that a lot more the engagement is massive we tend to get a couple of soldiers that join us on our annual camps and things and the kids love having them there like they learn a lot from them and it's great that they're starting to appreciate and understand what we do as an organization yeah i do uh, can I, uh, I i do sometimes think that we 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 can get it wrong mm -hmm. in that people think army support to cadets is a platoon of soldiers here or a section there actually what you want is one or two really inspirational soldiers yeah. who want to be involved i, I remember a story so um, <laughs> one of my former cadets a chap called nick morton who uh, at the time so a couple of years ago he was well for the last two years he's been commanding seventh parachute regiment royal horse artillery down in um, colchester so linked to 16 Air Assault Brigade. Uh, and Nick is one of those great mates and sounds quite arrogant, but I don't mean it to be, but I've, I've been men I've mentored him from Sanders all the way through. Uh, and we are great mates. Uh, he's in Africa at the moment and I really feel for him because he's on a year tour and he had his first batch of R&R &R and of course lockdown. So his oh. wife's in London. And uh, he, chances are, he's not going to get back till November. Um, but we, we're still, we're chatting away. But prior to taking over a command, I said, Nick, listen to me. One thing you need to do, get involved with the cadets. He listened to me. We had a conversation. He got straight involved, gave it to his regimental sergeant major. And there was a new uh, CEP school, so Cadet Expansion Program, CCF in the Colchester region. So we actually went and joined them. And over the two years, eventually they cat badged 7th Para RHA. 
Uh, his boys used to go down and visit them, which was great. They loved it. But he also then sent one soldier on every Essex Army Cadet Force camp. Wow. That soldier asked to go back. Wow. Um, you know, it's, but it's great. But that comes from, again, a commander who gets people, understands the importance of it. Yeah. Uh, and why wouldn't you? So, yeah. But it's ones or twosies inspirational people get them to do something or just get them to go and chat to adults and cadets and they make the difference yeah 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 of course they do now, so we'll, we'll we'll kind of ask a question about one of your big hobbies now we know that you're a keen <laughs> cyclist um and you're currently operating in the role of chairman of the british army cycling can you tell us where your passion for cycling comes from i'm chairman uk on forces cycling Stuart. yeah <laughs> uh, yeah cycling i'm not a cyclist Oh, you're not? <laughs> no, I'm not. Genuinely, I'm not a cyclist. I wasn't a cyclist. I am now. It's in my blood. Um, it's in my DNA. I can't... Oh, yeah, it drives my family potty. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in lockdown. I've just... I don't, um, I've just got into the cycling books now, so I've been reading all sorts of cycling books. It's a really... Um, it's an interesting... It's a great question, Stuart, and it's, an in, it's going to be an interesting answer. I hope. So when I was commanding officer in Germany of 3RHA, one of my soldiers, Bombardier, now Bombardier Full Corporal, Bombardier Kev Alexis. Uh, Bombardier Alexis was on a bike. Now, when I was commanding officer, I did lots of golf. I didn't cycle. I played lots of golf. It's amazing how many soldiers then want to play golf when the commanding officer's playing golf. <laughs> Um, and all the and all the lycra clad boys would turn up on their bikes on the regimental sports parade on Wednesday afternoon and off they'd go and I went yeah okay that's a cheers easy go and sit in a cafe of course knowing now if I knew then what I know now I'd have said right actually I'm going to be with you because it's a great sport anyway Bombardier Alexis was very good on a bike I saw potential in him and I said right I'm going to help you so I put him on full-time training and I said, then found out who was involved with army cycling, got in touch with him and said, look, I've got a soldier here. I've put him on full-time training and I'm keen that he tries to get selected for the army team. Mm -hmm. He did. He then made it into the army team, which was great. That's important because then when I came back to uh, UK, I went to Afghanistan, came back from Afghanistan, and then I did a job as a divisional director at the Intermediate Command Staff Course at Shrivenham. So it's the major, all majors on promotion go to Shrivenham and do a six month course. So I was the, the full colonel divisional director. And in the induction process, one of the majors who has been inducted into the, the, the course as a, an instructor, Matt Woodison, uh, we got talking, and it turns out that he was the person I'd engaged to try and get Bombardier Alexis on the radar. So we were chatting away, and next thing I know, Matt says, oh, we need a chairman. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah I'll do that. <laughs> oh, my life. What have, I what, have I done? what have I volunteered for? <laughs> and um, that was six years ago. Was it? Yeah, six years ago. I'm still doing it. I love it. Why? Yeah. It's about people. Mm -hmm. I developed um, a why. I like why. Whiskey Hotel Yankee. Simon Sinek, start with why. Have I bored you with this before? Did I tell you this when we visited last? Maybe. Anyways, okay. the why, I was at a dinner, I was at a community engagement thing, and I was chatting next to, I was sat next to this chap. It turns out, turns out he was an entrepreneur. Turns out he'd been on Dragon's Den. Oh, cool. No word of a lie. He'd been on Dragon's Den. <laughs> he was he, he, he was a multi-millionaire. And he'd made these loop block things. So it was the um, rubber loop block. So you push them through and pull it and they won't come apart. And of course, if you go onto YouTube or across the globe on all these channels, that bit of Dragon's Den is, is still going. And that's where he made his money. And so, actually, he was, he was a really interesting guy. And we were chatting about, I said, oh, I've just been, I've been to see 
Simon Sinek, he'd done a presentation in New York, he'd flown over from America, the general had flown over from America. Uh, I'd read his book, so I was, I was really upset, uh, really up for this. And, and it was great. And, I, and he said, oh yeah. And I said, oh, I'm involved with cycling and I'm trying to work out my why. So he challenged me over to dinner on it. And the why, he said, initially, I, I forget what it was, you know, um, to try and get soldiers to do this on bicycles because it's good for you. And he just went too long. So over dinner, we suddenly came up with, I came up with, with him, inspiring soldiers to cycle. Now, this is important because later on when I take over, there'll be a little bit more about whys and purposes. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by that is that I then built a team around me and I said, team, everything we do has got to be about inspiring a soldier to get on a bike. Whether it's a BMX, I've got a private soldier who sadly, for lot through COVID, um, has impacted him this year because he was going to California in September to the World Championships. That's a 21-year-old private soldier who rides a BMX. And, but everything that we do is about inspiring soldiers to cycle. Now that was developed four years ago. It still holds true today and everybody refers to it. Mm -hmm. If it's not inspiring, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because why would you get on a bike if you're not being inspired to do so? So it's about helping people. And I've, I've enabled with the team soldiers to compete at the highest level possible. I've had uh, a female doctor, EJ Harris, great girl. Oh, wow, she's so strong on a bike. She's a doctor. She rode for Team GB in London, one race, brilliant. I've had Ryan Perry, a captain of the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Um, I secured support for the army to put him on full-time training. He did the Tour of Yorkshire, uh, which was incredible. He was the national time trial champion. Uh, and now we've got Private Kieran Binner, this 21-year-old soldier from the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment. And it's in my DNA. I, I absolutely love it. And it's volunteering. And there's this, this link between us because you know, you know what it means to be a volunteer and I know what it means for you to be a volunteer. So, um, so yeah, I love it. I love it. I really do. It's in my DNA. You have a basket on your bike, sir. <laughs> ah, well... There are two, well, yeah, there's a number of bikes in my garage. <laughs> two of them do, actually. I wish I had a picture of it. One's my wife's bike, and the other one is a bike that we bought. She'd always wanted one of these tricycles for little children. And we haven't yeah. got grandchildren, but not yet. But one of those has also got a small basket on it. <laughs> is there anyone in the army that rides on a unicycle? Do you know what? A really good question, Daisy. I'll ask. I'll, find, I'll tell you what I'm going to ask. I'll find out. And if there is, I'll get them to do it and take a picture. Got, I would you know, really we, like to the, know that, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, absolutely. Because it's, um, well, it's amazing what some of them do on bikes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. sir, you're soon to be appointed brigadier. You, you, we touched on that a little bit um, soon. How do you plan on using your influence as brigadier to better the Army Cadet Force? Cool. Well, am I not doing a good job now? <laughs> you can always do better <laughs> yeah it's um yeah i you know, it's the one job i wanted so to get it is brilliant mm -hmm. um and it's yeah it's great that i'm going to be promoted but it's being the deputy commander of you know our amazing youth organization uh, equally working as a deputy to a really inspiring general in General David Eastman, who I've known for years, uh, and he gets cadets like, like I do. Um, what do I want to do? I want to bring in that new role. I, I think I just want to bring my passion for cadets. To the so we'll all be cyclers then, <laughs> cyclists. <laughs> Funny old thing, there is a cadet from... Uh, Greater, uh, Greater London South East Sector, who was talking about cycling the other day, and Colonel Terry Hayes, the sports um, rep, mm -hmm. uh, has put out, we need to start doing cycling. So I said, we do. So yes, there will be some cycling, but I want to bring my passion. I just, 
I genuinely love this organization. Uh, and I want to bring that passion to bear in the two and a half years that I will be in this appointment. I want to set us up for long-term success. Yeah. And, and I want to, I'm going to be, I'll introduce people to my thinking. And I just hope that the conference in January survives because there's a little bit of theatre, but genuine theatre that I want to bring to it. I want people to understand better, better. I want them to understand better who we are, what we do, what we're about. Yeah. Too few people understand what you guys do. And that's within our own adult volunteers. Yeah. Because actually... So, um, and so I want them to realize that this is a premier youth organization. We wear uniform. And you'll hear me talk about, because I think it's a really powerful word, inspiring. I think the other one, another really powerful word is dynamism. I also think the, another really powerful word, because there's three, there's got to be three, is humility. So inspire to, inspire to achieve is really powerful in itself and you'll uh, you'll see in the course of time how i weave that into something because that's really important mm -hmm. i think we've got to better enable our adult volunteers to inspire and we're working really hard to do that now I'll ask me questions on that later if you wish and you know not least with the syllabus but you've got to be dynamic. I've met you two. I've seen the battalion. And do you know what? You're dynamic. That's great. You need more people who've got that dynamism. We are the but dynamic duo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, but we've equally, that we a need, few times. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, well, I, I see it. Clint, Colonel Clint mentioned that as well. And I think, and, and the reason I mentioned humility is we just need, it's a really powerful word because people need to understand that it's not a weakness to say, actually, I don't think I can do this. Can you help? Mm -hmm. And, and I've just used the example now. I know that there are counties out there, battalions, who are not major, who are not doing the virtual ACF. And the reason being is there is a level in their organization who, don't, who are not comfortable doing what you two are doing with me now. Mm -hmm. Well, if they asked, if they were humble if they showed a bit of humility and just said help is there anybody who can help me do this i think you would probably find straight away hand up yeah i can do this yeah let's go it's not a weakness 100 percent agree with that yeah absolutely so your full title is colonel stuart williams obe can you tell us about this and also how you got this title yeah um well, it's, it's actually Colonel Stuart C. Williams. We don't know what C is. <laughs> Do you know, my brother's called Simon. My brother is S. Williams and I'm S. C. Williams. Well, I've got it. Colonel Stuart Cyclist Williams. Ah! Oh, Daisy, you're on fire today. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget. It was, it was incredible because to, to get told that you've got a state award which, you know, the, the order of the British Empire goes back to King George V. Yeah. And, um, you know, for service to the arts, sciences, charities, the community, and the civilian and military division. And we're very lucky within the military that we, we have the military division of it. So to be told by the general uh, that I'd been appointed uh, an officer of the British Empire and was then... Um, going to have OBE after my name and get a trip to the palace was just, oh, reduced me to tears, literally it did. Um, and of course I was told, and then you got, you're sworn to secrecy. So I could tell my wife, <laughs> I couldn't tell my children until it was going to be announced. And uh, so, yeah, that was interesting. And then we had to tell my family and they thought my wife and I were about to get divorced because we said, we need you here on this time. We've got an announcement. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, my mother was there going, oh crikey, what's going on? Yeah, it was um, yeah, a very special day. I was very lucky in that 
Um, I, from the time I was in Seven Brigade, I, I got heavily involved with cadets. And so the, the award was for my work that I was doing with cadets, but uh, more, more significantly, I think, with the ethnic minority communities. So I did a lot of work with the Muslim and black African communities in Nottingham and Leicester. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because of that really. And yeah, I was just had a great team around, around me and we just did stuff. And I think, you know, if you want to know a bit more about, you know, the BAME side. Yes, yeah, so we'd love to know about some of the work you do with your black, Asian and minority ethnic communities and why inclusion and diversity is so important mm -hmm. within the ACF. Cool. Because actually it's all linked. Mm -hmm. It's all linked. You, we've got to make a difference uh, and you can make a difference, but it takes relentless commitment. And, and I used to, I've said to every general, you know, you've got to be consistent and you've got to keep doing it. Muslim, Muslims in particular, senior Muslims, the elders, have a really long memory. So if you turn up in January one year, you don't go back until January the next year. Yeah, okay, they've forgotten you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a consistent level of engagement that you have, to, you have to do. So I met, I was introduced by one of my team to senior imam, Dr. Musharraf Hussain, who I uh, am friends with. Uh, we were speaking, what, three, four weeks, five weeks ago during Ramadan. And uh, yeah, he was... Um, a big fan of the army of the army cadets so he wanted to try and get more of his community into uh, the army cadets in particular so it was about engaging with these communities and trying to just develop relationships break down barriers and just to show you that a bloke in uniform like me a white bloke in uniform is just Stuart Williams yeah. mm -hmm. and we're British. Dr. Musharraf's start film was we're British. Now I know that in Glasgow there are, there's, there's a big Muslim community and 51 Brigade have been engaging with them. You know, their start point will be we're Scottish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but you've got to be, and, and I was introduced to Professor Akbar Ahmed, who is, uh, was the America, the ambassador um, to the America. American ambassador in uh, Pakistan. Pakistan, yeah. He is the leading, one of the leading uh, contemporary um, analysts, figures in contemporary Islam. And I was introduced to him by Dr. Musharraf. We hit it off because he was a big, Professor Akbar was a big historian. And he said to me, Stuart, you've got to be out in the field playing the game. If you're not out there being seen, engaging on a regular basis, you're not going to make a difference. And so I spent my time in Seven Brigade and I focused on Nottingham and Leicester. I started off with a Muslim community and then I went into the black African Caribbean community and I've got some great friendships that are still there because it's important. Uh, I had a brilliant Sergeant Major who thankfully he was appointed to be a member of the British Empire MB for his work and we put him in some really dangerous places but he was one of these people and hopefully you'll meet him in January so I'm going to bring him to the conference um, because I need people to hear his story. Um, he, we used to talk about it every day, like what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. We'd go to Friday prayers every week. I then made sure once I introduced him and he'd been respected and trusted, I could then step away and go somewhere else. But I then always keep coming back. Mm -hmm. It's that selfless commitment which you guys get at large. And um, one day he said, we've got to get into this particular area in Nottingham. And it was a really, it was a really rough area. It's where Nottingham was renowned for having very high night crime. And this was the center of it. 
and Sergeant Major Runner Craig Rutter, um, who sadly is, uh, suffers from NS uh, in a bad way, and so he's dis medically discharged. He, he went, he put himself out and he went to places in uniform. People saying, here, yeah, mate, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be in this, this place. Sergeant Major Rutter told a great story. And he always said, yeah, I can. He said, I've been where you were. He said, the police told me you're either going to go one or two ways. You're going to carry on as you are and go to prison, or you're going to join the army. So he joined the army. And, and he, he helped me. So we, again, we were a bit of a team. And so you can't be everywhere, but so you've got to focus your efforts. And, it's, and I think we did, we did make a lasting difference. And the fact that I'm still engaged with them, those communities now, mm -hmm. I think says it all. Mm -hmm. But equally then, I also did a lot with the cadets. And you probably heard, you've already heard my cadet story. And, and, I, and it, was, it was so nice to be recognized for something I was just genuinely passionate about. And uh, forgive me, can I, I just wanted to go back to the bit that I, so you talked about diversity and inclusion, inclusivity and why it's important for us. We've got step change, which is brilliant. Diversity and inclusivity is here to stay. I think as a cadet force, we are uniquely diverse already. We reflect society. Yeah, 100%, sir. And so let's celebrate it. Go positive. Um, positive, you know, being uh, enthusiasm is infectious. Being negative is infectious as well. Mm -hmm. We are a diverse youth organisation. Everywhere you go, we see diversity and we're inclusive. Let's celebrate it mm -hmm. because we're there. So let's just do a little bit more with it. But, my, but the thing that I mentioned the other day, my short statement about I will not accept discrimination of any, any kind. You know, we are one, the Army Cadets, uh, inclusive by design and set to embrace and inspire all. I mean it. I want, I'm going to do more. I'm already talking to our fame network. I'm talking to people who believe in doing more. Let's have an international day. So I want Highlanders Battalion ACF. I want you next year to deliver an international day. I want everybody to do it. Let's celebrate our diversity because the cadets and the adults will then learn from each other. We did it in my regiment. It's brilliant. We had, in my regiment, 30% of my junior, my Lance Bombardiers, Lance Corporals and below, were black for Jim. So I said, right, let's have an international day. And we were to Liverpool and Manchester gunners. So we had lots of scousers and thieving manks. Oh, am I allowed to say that? So <laughs> lots of scousers and manks. And uh, we did this international day. We gave, threw money at it. Go and celebrate your heritage. And you had these young scallies from Liverpool walking around and seeing the guy that they were on the gun with who just so happened to be from Nigeria or Ghana or Malawi or uh, Lesotho or Fiji with their families in their national costumes with their national food it still goes on every year in the regiment because it brings everybody together and celebrates diversity we're there, but let's do a bit more. It's really important. Yeah. But we well, cannot accept discrimination of any kind. I really like the International Day idea, sir. Yeah. We'll all be there with our haggis and our kilts. Yes, I know, I know. It'd be great. It'd be great. And I think, <laughs> you know, and, and yours, is, yours is brilliant because you, you're going to have you, there'll be pipes, there'll be drums, there'll be haggis, there'll be Scottish dancing, there'll be, oh, it'd be, be brilliant. And then there'll be... I guarantee some African heritage that's coming in. There'll be some Indian heritage that's coming in. And you're just going, wow, this is brilliant. We're all Scottish. Yeah. We're all British. We're Scottish. Yeah, that's the start point. Yeah. yeah.
No, thank you so much, sir, for answering those questions. Um, if you don't mind now, we're going to ask you some questions that our adult volunteers and cadets yeah. have asked us. This is where it gets interesting and right down to the nitty gritty. So I'll start with the first one, and this is from Lance Corporal Callum Anderson, who's a cadet at Forest Detachment. And he's asked, is there anything in your career that you would do differently or just do again? I would do more adventure training. I started off in a regiment where... We were in, it's called the ACE Mobile Force, the Allied Command Europe Mobile Force. And we went all over Europe. So we, you know, in the summer, we could be in Turkey. In the spring, we could be in Denmark. Every winter, we went to Norway. And we were the leaders for our, outside of the Royal Marines for Arctic warfare. I did a lot of cross-country skiing there. I'm an Arctic warfare instructor, funny old you know. <laughs> it's, it's quite quite bizarre it, you know, we were able to bury soldiers in a, um, a setup am, um, avalanche then crash the students out from base so oh, there's been an avalanche and literally drive them up into the mountains where we'd set this avalanche up we buried soldiers <laughs> there to find them uh, i don't think we left anybody behind um, but that was great that was great and um so i got a a a real interest in that type of outward bound activity. It was all, it was kind of outward bound, cross country skiing, touring, but I never then developed it in the adventure training space. And I wish I had, I wish I had, because I think becoming an instructor and then taking more people away and furthering your passion, I suppose I'm now doing that with army cycling. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, and actually people can do it in the army cadet course. So um, yeah. I would say go and do it. Focus on adventure training. If that's what you're into, make it a passion. Go and get as far as you can in that. Because if you like doing it, you'll do well. And sir, have you ever been caving? I have been caving once. Ooh. When I, in my winters in Norway, we did snow holing. And, you know, uh, I was always a little bit worried about going into something that's yeah, quite small, mm -hmm. but actually having to go down the tunnels into the snow hole, you got used to it. But yeah, why'd you ask? Just if you ever fancy going caving, start major target and myself like to take the kids in a cave. So if you fancy it, you can come and join us with our wonderful AT instructor, Lieutenant Roberts. Right, you're on. Oh, oh what am I saying? Oh, right, yeah, you're on. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> yes. So just um, just going to be mentioned uh, the Ace Mobile Force. Now mm. I don't know if you've seen. We interviewed Tony Brown. So he he is the founder basically of Forces Manor, and he was also in the Ace Mobile Force. Was land. he? Yeah. Um, so, so he he's founded um, this place called Forces Manor, which he's built from scratch, and it's going to be a rest and rehabilitation centre for. Um, veterans, any armed okay. forces personnel, cadet yeah. forces personnel. Um, yeah. oh, I wonder what regiment it was. Yeah, cause the, the infantry battalion when I was in the Ace Mobile Force were the Fusiliers. Like yeah, I will. Okay. Tony um, Brown. Really yeah. worth a watch, sir. What he's doing is amazing. Okay. Really got it. Got it. Uh, sir, I've got a question. Question number two. Uh, and you kind of touched on that earlier on, but have you ever thought about putting together a cadet force cycling team? Yeah, but it's not going to be a tight cycling team, I don't think. Um, so I was engaging again before lockdown with Deputy Chief Exec of the North East RFCA, Ian Clyde, because he's, a, uh, he's into cycling, but also triathlon. And he has a number of cadets that do it. So I said, right, I'll go up and visit them and go out on my bike. Uh, Terry is going to look at doing something else as well. And I think it's a brilliant sport. We just have to be really careful. Um, about how we do it um, because again I've learned lessons from army cycling mm -hmm. but linked to that there is a, uh, a chap called uh, James um, uh, G uh, Jimmy Golding and Jimmy is a guy that recovered I I'm going to try and get into the conference in January he's recovered from cancer and he now does, he write, he's, he's, he's training at the minute to do Ride Across America. He's done some amazing feats on a bike. Jimmy is linked with a charity in South Africa. 
and it's all about bringing cycling to schools. Mm -hmm. They've sort of gone into some of the townships where you know, kids have nothing. You know, they go to school. So they've said, well, let's bring cycling to the school. So we'll, we'll enable you to do something else. And they provide the bikes and everything. And, and he, he asked me, because I've developed a relationship with him. Uh, he said, um, what do you reckon? And I said, well, we've got the infrastructure right across the country. So we can pro provide somewhere to store the bikes. If you can provide the instructors, then we'll introduce uh, in small groups cadets to cycling and see what we can't find out because you never know we might find the next uh, Bradley Wiggins next Chris, Chris Froome next Garen Thomas next Chris Hoy <laughs> so be. we are looking at it we are looking at it and so we'll, re, we'll reignite that as well when we get through because um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Jimmy's in touch and he said yeah we'll, we'll get to get to chat but I think yeah opportunity student. Opp opportunity always. yeah always so, sir, the next question is actually an anonymous one. <laughs> um, and this anonymous person has asked, is your nickname Snowy? And if so, why are you called that? Um, and I can take that from your reaction that the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I've been known Snowy goes back to school. Yeah. I wonder why. And I didn't have black hair. <laughs> yeah, it's funny though when people call me at, uh, at work. There's those that have no always have only ever known me as Snowy, and then there's those that have only ever known me as Stuart. Occasionally, some people get an interesting reaction when they call me Snowy. I go, "You don't know." Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, our next question, sir, is from Colour Sergeant Wells in Elgin. So he's our Elgin Detachment Commander in the Battalion. Um, yeah. And his question is, what is the biggest rugby game that you've ever refed at? Cool. The biggest rugby game I've ever refed at? Scotland, England? Uh, the, <laughs> I think the most challenging most challenging game I uh, refereed at, interesting, and I'm going to ask it a different way, was um, uh, an under-17 cup final in Wiltshire. I forget the one team, I think it was Trowbridge, one team. And the reason that was challenging is because under-18, you know, under under-17 rugby is fast and furious. And, and the, the standard, actually, for, you know, for, for that, but our age group was, was brilliant. And it was, it was one of the most inspiring games I've refereed. Um, sadly, there was a severe, serious injury at the end of it. But it was, it was great because you had to be on your game. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but the biggest game I've, I didn't referee at, I was, um, I was number two. So I was AR1, assistant referee one, was the uh, Royal Navy, Royal Air Force, probably about five years ago. And it was the, I did the veterans game, uh, which was great. So I was there for the whole day. So that was good. Yeah. I haven't done as much refereeing, you know, actually, Stuart, of late. Something I'm probably going to try and get into when we get through this. But cycling, you know, takes up so much time. Like cadetting does you, but you like doing it. So you do it, don't you? Yeah, that's it. Um, okay, yeah. so, so the next question is from me. And I'm thinking specifically uh -huh. about adult training and courses, whether it be, you know, at Sandhurst or Frimley Park. Um, a lot of these courses tend to run alongside English term time. So school term time. Is there scope to change that? Uh, you know, for me personally, I'm a teacher and mm. I struggle to get time off to go on courses. And I know there are other adults in specifically up here who have different circumstances that also can't get off during the term time you know it's quite different um england and scotland in terms of education and things is there is there any scope to change that or is it a done deal no great question we produce the forecast of events at least two years out uh we can we get, we've got to do better daisy we've got to do better i think we've got to provide opportunity for all and again i touched on a little bit of it earlier about how we better enable adults 
Um, there'll be other bits that link into this, which I don't, I'll, I won't expose now because I'll wait till I'm in, my, in the new role. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we do need to do better. And I think there's, an, there's things that we're learning now during lockdown for how we can better support exactly, exactly what you just asked for. And um, we'll have a look. I mean, Can't I promise anything, but we'll have a look. But it's a great course. That is a genuinely brilliant course. And Neil is, is bringing a, a really refreshing outlook on leadership. And it will set you up. I hope you was in your day job as a teacher, mm -hmm. as well as it will with the cadets. But yeah, it's a great point. We need to do better. Yeah. No, thanks, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just, just, just whenever you mentioned there about something, um, you know, obviously, Lieutenant Burnside um, is a teacher and it's all about term time and stuff, but is there anything, and you're, you're kind of talking about it there as well, saying that, you know, this lockdown has kind of opened your eyes to the more kind of the Zoom platforms and all that sort of stuff. Is there anything that would kind of come into place for maybe, obviously Scotland's a big place, we have islands, Western Isles, Orkney and Shetland. Is there anything maybe that can be put in the pipeline for those adults or even the cadets as well? who are further afield for like courses um, you know, and you're talking about opportunity as well. Is there anything kind of that's, I don't know, maybe worth discussing? We would yeah. love courses in Scotland. <laughs> it takes us ages to go anywhere. It takes us at least an extra day to travel. The simple answer is yes. The challenge though is if you say we're going to run a course in Scotland, and it's this, and it's this date, mm -hmm. you still won't satisfy everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but equally, you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, Stuart, what we're talking about now, what, what we're on now, Zoom. So every battalion, every county has now got a Zoom license that we paid for. So it's a technology that's there, let's, ex let's exploit it. I think it has a part to play as we move forward. It, well, that's why we've gone that way. Uh, it, doesn't replicate, it doesn't replace face-to-face -face training. Yeah. No. But I think, again, if, it's, if I was using my army cycling why, so if it's inspiring a soldier to cycle doing that way, let's do it. So mm -hmm. I'd almost like to say I'll empower you within the Highlanders, within the battalion, to go and deliver something and, and tell me it works. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, learn from it. What can you do better next time? Mm -hmm. I always, so I think at times we can, we, we need to, I, I want to, it's like a bit like the safety management system. We try, we're empowering you. So we, we're delegating authority to a level that people are comfortable with. So that as a detachment commander, so, that, so was it Colour Sant Wells at Elgin? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so for the colour sign, if he's a detachment commander at, at Elgin, you know, I'm hoping that he will be empowered to plan and deliver activity across the syllabus without having to seek approvals and assurances mm -hmm. um, unless it's something that's outside of his remit. Mm -hmm. Get on and deliver it. So I'd happily say to the battalion, if you, but if you want to do that, go and do it. Just make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. Make sure you've thought it through. You've got a duty of care for everybody, adults, cadets, safeguarding writ large, SST. And um, yeah, and prove the model. And sir, I, I, I don't mean that to come across in a selfish way. You know, I'm asking about a specific course, but as a teacher, but I know there are lots of adult volunteers in similar positions. You know, maybe that childcare is an issue in the summer holidays mm -hmm. and things like that. So, you know, I don't mean to ask that just to benefit myself. I mean that for other it's, adults in the same. No, Daisy, it's, no, that's fine. I think it's, it's, it's the, it's, as I say, there's, there's, no one, there's no one size fits all. We've got to just open our eyes to other ways of doing business. And again, I, I, without saying too much, it, it comes back. So if people, when people understand my why, so inspiring soldiers to cycle is the best example, then if there's, a, if there's something that we can do that actually goes all the way back to that why, so inspire to achieve will be somewhere in what I'm going to be saying eventually. Well, 
if it's going to inspire somebody and it's going to enable them to achieve in a better way, do it. But what we mustn't do is have the syllabus unravel, Frimley's not used, yeah. and it's, it's what, yeah. we, what we're trying to get away, and it's a bit like with a safety management system. The problem we had is we were told to do it, so we've done it, and, and, and it, is, it works. And we're redoing it, we're, we're doing version two now just to unpack a little bit more. But across the country, people were doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. And you had counties or battalions using their own forms. Well, where's the standardization? Yeah. We have a syllabus. We are the army cadets. Mm-hmm. We do things this way. And we do it safely. Believe in the system. So we're now developing the system to enable people to do it. We're giving you the tools. We're going to empower you. But there's always a way of doing things better, Stuart, and I'm always open to ideas. So we'll move on to a bit of a more kind of jovial question. And this is from another anonymous. We don't know who it's from. Uh, and they've asked the question, do you shave your legs, sir? You <laughs> know it's something to do with cycling, maybe? No, because I don't do speed that way. <laughs> um, That's right. Okay. That's- <laughs> It takes me. It takes me enough to actually just get on the bike and ride it. <laughs> um, cool. so whoever, whoever was asked that question, that's obviously answered. I think it was Sergeant Major Taggart because he. Should... <laughs> I yeah. think that's who it was. <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. So the next question is again from Lance Corporal Calm Anderson, and he's asked, "Have you got any big things planned for the future of the ACF, or are you going to keep it all under wraps?" That's okay. Yeah, yeah there's um, maybe hint. Well, I think you know, well, so I'll, I'll give you two. I mean, one of the things and it links back. You know, what, what I want to set us up for long term success. Uh, we have we have this during lockdown. We've done, we've been really busy. One of the things I'm I'm doing is I'm I'm keen to with Brigadier Mark. We we want to ensure that every detachment is resourced with air rifles. So we currently have a very big project that's going through at the moment uh, where we uh, plan to be able to provide every detachment with four air rifles and a pellet catcher to enable you to deliver air rifle shooting every week if you, if you so wish, at a parade night. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to ad- get a bespoke course developed for adults so that you don't have to do the 2-2 course. We want it to be air rifles because the new shooting uh, piece of the syllabus is going to go from air rifle to A2. If you want to do target rifle shooting, that will be an elective, mm-hmm. which is definitely the right way to go because if, you're, if you've got a skill then you can go to do it as an elective where people will invest in you yep. to make you as good as you can be. Yep. But air rifle, you can use anywhere. Yeah. You know, air, and we've got that wrong. So that's a big project. The other one is I, uh, I was very lucky just prior to lockdown. I went to Nepal and I was invited over there to visit their national cadet corps. They have an international program with uh, Southeast uh, in Asian countries, and there was you know Pakistan, India, um, Sri Lanka, the Maldives. There was a contingent from the Maldives. Well, they came to Nepal and they did the most amazing cultural and um, developmental program. It was fantastic, and we'll see what happens now as a result of COVID. But we were looking to get that um, an opportunity for army cadets to be involved. Wow! I'd love that to happen, if not next year, the year after, and it'll be for a small group, twelve cadets, two adult volunteers. One, two. Yeah, I know, I know, and it's <laughs> it's it was it was brilliant, and seeing. Seeing how the cadets interacted with each other at the end of the week, brilliant mm-hmm. life making lasting friendships. Yeah, so there's two, and there's, the, there's a couple of other, there's a couple of other things, but yeah, yeah. 
So our last question then, so question number eight is from Cadet Samuel Owen from Hawkirk Detachment. So he's just down the road here. Um, and he was asking, how was life whenever you were stationed in Germany and Kosovo? And what city were you stationed at? So in Germany, God, I've been all over. Um, where do I start? So in Germany, so started off in Otterburn, sorry, Osnabrück. <laughs> I've been Osnabrück, Bergen-Hohner, Guttersloe, Hereford, um, Northern Germany, mm -hmm. uh, which was just fantastic. Great quality of life. Yeah, cycling. I didn't really do cycling there, but every every town, even from from Bergen Hohner, so Bergen Belsen concentration camp. Yeah. That was you know, Bergen Hohner was came out of that. So it was from Bergen Hohner, the the village, to um, to Bergen to Sella. Everywhere you went, there were cycle paths. It's a wood, and there's a cycle path on the side of the road. They really did cater for everything. It was great. Loved, loved, loved my time in Germany. So I was all over the nor northern part. We used to fly into Hanover all the time. Uh, so I was never, mind you, then you'd go to southern Germany, to Bavaria, and you'd just think, well, why was it the Americans had the south and we had the north? But Germany was, was brilliant. So I hope that answers that part of the question. Kosovo, I was lucky. I went to, started off in Pristina in the capital. And then I went up to Podievo. And uh, so I, yeah, I had a bit of both. So I had the city, of course, you know, it was, it was fairly run down and it was being rebuilt. And then Podievo was a big purple, well, it was, Podievo was again another town, but you had this huge camp that had been built on a, you know, mud on a field out of Corimax. And uh, yeah, we operated out of there. Hopefully that's answered your question, Sam. Yeah, I'd be interested to know why Sam asked that question. I want to come up, yeah. You'll need to ask him when you come and visit us. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to a bit of fun at the end. This is our quick yeah. round. We're going to ask you an either our question and you're to choose your favourite answer. Um, first question, cat or dog? Cat. Truth or dare? Truth. Phone call or text message? Phone call. Road racing or cross country racing? Road. Sweets or crisps? Sweets. Malbec or Chardonnay? Malbec. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee. TV or book? TV. Summer or winter? Summer. Specialised or cube? Specialised. For those of you that don't know, there are some bike brands. Bikes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, skydive or bungee jump? Bungee. Never done it. Okay, next one is Muck Off or Fenwicks. Fenwicks. I have no comparison. idea what that is. <laughs> Cleaning products on bikes. I was just researching, I'm thinking, what's this fascination with Fenwicks? I'm thinking, <laughs> right, I have to find an alternative. <laughs> uh, dancing or singing? Dancing. <laughs> Port or whiskey? Port. Big whiskey fan. Port, wow. I do, actually, yeah, when I said port, it's that first thing, actually, no, whiskey. I love um, Scapa. We'll need to get a bottle in when you come up to answer. We, we do our research very thorough. <laughs> An interest, yeah, okay. I'll come back to one of the, I'll come back to one of the answers. Um, Desert Rats or Regional Command? Desert Rats. Presta or Schrader? Oh. Presta. Presta, yeah. DPM or MTP? Sorry, D? DPM. Oh. MTP. MTP. Uh, rugby League or Rugby Union? Union. Wow. <laughs> book or audio book? Book. Target rifle or shotgun? Shotgun. Vespa scooter or your road bike? Road bike. Tour de France or Tour de Yorkshire? Tour de France. <laughs> Downhill skiing or cross country skiing? Downhill. Wow. And the last one then is the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst or Frimley Park? Sandhurst. Sir, I have to say, those have been the quickest answers we've had. <laughs> Wait, 
I've watched so Jordan great. Wiley, you see, when people when he does it with people and they spend too long. Yeah. So Malbec Chardonnay, actually Chardonnay, because I, I'm into my white wine at the minute. They were great. There were some good questions. Thanks, Aaron. Glad you yeah, enjoyed them. Um, thank you for answering all of our questions today. It's been great to have you yeah. on and get the chance to speak to you again. And I hope our viewers have enjoyed this interview. I know both myself and Sergeant Major Target have. What? Oh, I thought somebody said something and then just stopped. No. <laughs> Do you hear what I said? No. Yeah, I, I heard it. Oh, did you hear it? Heat it, Colonel Williams. What's that? I just give you a big thanks for coming oh. and joining us today. Oh, oh no, I, I, was, I was just waiting. Suddenly you went, yeah, no, it's brilliant. I've loved it. It's <laughs> I was great. like, oh, no, awkward silence, what's happened? <laughs> oh, no, I was, it's, uh, yeah, no, oh, it's fantastic. No, I've loved it. It's great. Thank you very great much. Great to talk time. to you guys. It, it, it genuinely is. But I think, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. I was just thinking, oh, I'm going to go out on my bike in a minute. It's still warm. <laughs> uh, no, I've loved it. And, you know, thank you for inviting me in. No, not at all. It's been great. You've been our last interview, so it's nice to finish yeah. on a high note. Um, you, no one thinks of you, so it's, it's great. But I just, it's, to be able to you know, spend an hour and 10 minutes with you guys, um, you know, you care, you deliver, you're what we're, we're all about, and your cadets will benefit from your engagement. And, uh, and I just, I'm just so lucky that I'm going to be. I'm going to see my time out in the army being involved with our amazing organisation. So, yeah, thanks for your time, yep. guys. And, sir, are you planning on coming up to the Highlands to visit us soon? Absolutely. I, um, I mean it. I, I'm going to go. I want to go to the Shetlands. Uh, and I will, as soon as I can, I'll get out. Yeah, I, I want to be seen. Leadership's about being seen. And, yep. um, you know, the general, as com com Commander Cadets, has a lot of other things on his plate, but he will be as passionate as I am about it and he'll get out, but I need to be seen. I think it's, it's important that we, we come and see all of our uh, cadet force, cadet forces, be them school or community cadets, mm -hmm. battalions, counties. Yeah, I look forward to it. And we wish you the best of luck in your new position as Brigadier, sir. Yeah, great. Thank you, Daisy. Thanks, Stuart. And sorry, I was a bit, I was, wait, I was waiting for, oh, what's a catch? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Don't worry. <laughs> Enjoy the sun. All right, great. See you soon. Bye. Cheerio. Bye. Bye.